Hello and welcome to my beach fishing guide. I am Stanley Orchard. And if you would like more basic fishing tips and in-depth fishing tips from shore, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you never miss an opportunity to drag some big fish through the hotel lobby with us. Now, in today's beach fishing tutorial, I am going to break down what tackle you are going to need, where to fish, how to target select species, and how all of this changes based on season right now. So let's take a look at how to catch fish at the beach, breaking down these four simple fishing tips. Now, the very first thing that we need to be discussing right now when talking about fishing at the beach is the tackle that you are going to be using. I want you to know that everything we're going to be talking about is going to be readily available at the bait stands and tackle stores that you're going to have in that area. But if you want to get a head start on your collection, if you want to try to save a few dollars, I do have a link in the description down below that'll take you to my personal Amazon list of everything that I buy online and everything that I'm going to be using here. Now, that is an affiliate link, comes at no additional cost to you, but we do receive a commission anytime you make a purchase off of that link, and it goes to support this channel, and I want to thank you very much in advance. Now, first off, when we're talking about tackle, we need to talk about the line that you're putting on your reel. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Personally, I like to put a whole lot of braid on my reel. That allows me to pack as much line as I physically can on there because I like to get my baits as far offshore as I can get them. I typically go with 15 pound or 20 pound weight braid. The most important and critical aspect of your line is going to be the leader that you put on regardless of whatever you have spooled on your reel. I like to use a good 20 to 30 pound floral carbon leader. I don't want the fish seeing the line attached to my bait. I want the most natural presentation on my bait that I can get and the best way of doing that is having the super clear floral carbon at the end of your line. I will use a wire leader in the event I'm going for something really big like a shark. Otherwise floral carbon leader all the way. The next bit of tackle we need to be looking at is gonna be the hooks that you use. I don't have a solid answer as to what kind of hook you need to be using. I'm afraid you're gonna to have to get a couple different selections depending on what kind of fishing you're gonna be doing. We will get into that in just a minute. But the hooks you need to get regardless of whatever kind of fish you're getting, first and foremost, get yourself a thing of circle hooks. In fact, you probably wanna get a couple. Personally, I'm a fan of Mustad. These guys make really great hooks. I love them to death. The uh, Demon Perfect Circle are the ones that I use for like 90% of the fishing that I do. I go anywhere from 3-aught to these really big guys right here. That's something that I would use for a redfish. This one right there is the one that I use for smaller sharks and I'll use an even bigger one if I'm going for like a really big time shark. So there's several different sizes of circle hook that you can get depending on what you're doing. I suggest get yourself a small pack, every single one, cross your fingers and see what works. Now, if I'm going to be fishing for trout or something like that, that's a little bit different. I will use treble hooks for that. And that's about the size. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that's about a 2 aught size. If you want it about the size of your thumb, you want it to fit into the speckled trout's mouth, but you don't want them to see it. So don't go too, too big with it. Make sure it can fit in their mouth, but don't go too small because you don't want it to rip out when you go to hook them. And of course, after you get yourself the right line and you get yourself a couple packs of really good hooks, the next thing I would suggest is getting a popping cork. There's a couple of different options out there, personally. I like these guys, you'll see them in a pack of two or three. These are base layers. And I highly, highly suggest, if you can get your hands on outcast popping quartz, I absolutely love these things. These are a game changer. And the reason why is because they got that lead weight on the end of them, makes it super easy to get yourself a monster cast. It's so much easier to get your bait cast out with those things. I love them to death. I've got a ton of them. This is another one of those things where I can't really tell you which weight to use because it kind of depends on what the conditions are. It doesn't really matter. However, if there's any surf, current, or wind at all, you really need to get yourself some of these surf weights. I love these things to death because on the really bad days, this is the only thing that is keeping me in the water fishing. I think that one there is a 12 ounce. They're really big and heavy and it's an easy way to break your rod, so be careful with that. But these things are a game changer when there is any current or surf at all. And the way that you use these, you're gonna hook that onto your line. You're gonna bend these guys out. They work like a treble hook. You want them to hook into the sand when they're sitting there down on the bottom. I do use artificials from time to time. I don't even wanna get into those on this video. And the reason being is there's so many options. If you wanna have a discussion about that in the comments down below, feel free, you guys can have at it. Wanna take a look at the ones that I use. I've got them in that link in the description down below as well. I just don't wanna get into it in the video. There are so many different things to talk about when it comes to artificials. Okay, we've got your tackle box all set up. Now it's time to talk about where you're going to be fishing. 
this is my process when I am going out to the beach. The very first thing that I do is I get there at like 6.30 in the morning. And the first thing that I do is I take out the popping cork with about, that's about a 30 inch liter with a treble hook. And I try to use live shrimp, but live mullet works pretty good too. I take that and I cast it out into the very first gut. You can almost cast from dry sand into that first gut and catch those trout as they're working early in the morning. After the morning bite is turned off, my next plan of attack is to head out to the second sandbar and cast out a drop shot into that next little bit deeper gut. And we're going for redfish on that one. Maybe some trout, possibly stingrays and things like that. Just about anything that is eating at the beach is going to be eating in that second gut. So that's a really good place to have a couple of baits. And that's where a lot of people make their first mistake. They're casting off the beach. You're not gonna be getting into good real estate casting from the beach. You're gonna have to get a little bit wet. If I really want to impress my wife and daughter, maybe I want to make a video that's going to get more than like, you know, 100 views. The next plan of attack is to be fishing out on the third sandbar. That can be heinous. When you see people kayaking baits out, that's where they're going, is out past the third sandbar. Most of the time, it's a swim to get out there, and I don't suggest doing it. It can be kind of dangerous, especially when there's high surf or a ripping current. I'm not gonna lie, when I get my best fish, like this guy right here, that's how I got him is by casting off of the third sandbar into water that's typically 12 to 15 feet deep. Now let's take a moment and talk about the types of species that you're going to be fishing for. You're fishing off the beach. The one that just about everybody talks about when they're fishing down here is gonna be redfish. That's about the most popular sports fishing species available down here, especially when you're fishing off the beach. If you're looking for those guys, you wanna use that fluorocarbon drop shot setup and you want to do it as far out into the deepest water that you can get. I suggest using live shrimp. They will take mullet, live mullet preferably, but I've had them take cut mullet. If it's a calm day and the water is really clear, you really want to use that fluorocarbon and try to use a live bait. They will see it and they will go for it. If you've got a live mullet, fingerling mullet about like that do really good. Of course, if you're going for those big bull reds, that one that I caught was on a bait that was about that long. It's about 10 inches. However, not all days out of the beach are super clear. If the water isn't that clear, and I'm talking three or four foot visibility, then those redfish are not hunting by sight, they're hunting by smell. That being the case, get yourself a smelly bait. Use cut mullet out there, and it's gonna work a lot better than a shrimp that they're not gonna be able to find because it's too small. If you're looking for trout, you can get those on a drop shot out there the same way you're getting redfish. However, I highly suggest that if you want to target them, the way that I mentioned earlier is the way to do that. Take that popping cork, 30 inch fluorocarbon leader with a treble hook, put a shrimp on the end, or a live mullet, you're gonna do just fine. You can also hit that first gut or even that second gut with artificials. That is not a bad way to get trout. I would suggest using bottom artificials, like a half ounce sinker or something like that if you're going a little bit farther out. But in that first gut, anything that moves, those trout are going after. If you're going for pompano, you're going to find those guys feeding just outside the first or second sandbar. They like to sit there where the waves are just breaking in. It kicks up a bunch of sediment, it stirs up stuff for them to eat, and that's what they're doing is cruising down those sandbars and looking for things to eat. Put your bait right there, that's where you get them. Personally, I like to use dead shrimp on a drop shot. When the pompano are biting, you'll know it because they are gonna be tearing you apart. They're all over the place when they're out there. You want to get yourself into some sharks, maybe a big jackfish, something to really impress the people that are camping out on the beach around you. The way you go about doing that is by making a heavy duty wire leader drop shot. You want that bait about 36 inches away from a T-swivel, likely going to be using one of those big spider weights on one end and one of them big circle hooks on the other. Get yourself a big piece of cut bait and you want that thing as far out and in the deepest water you can physically put that bait into. The deeper the water, the bigger the fish. I do like to use live bait when I'm fishing for sharks and jacks. However, the same rule applies if the water's a little bit dirty, you wanna use cut bait because they're gonna be looking for it by smell rather than sight. You also wanna make sure that you keep your rods really high up. That's why you see those big rigs on top of trucks for the shark fishermen, or they like to be fishing off the end of the pier. Because you want that bait so far out, it has a tendency of getting rolled up in the surf or blown in in the wind. It'll knock that bait around. And of course, for all of these species, the times that they like to bite, it can tend to differ. However, the best fishing is going to be six o'clock in the morning till 10 in the morning and four in the afternoon till about two in the morning.
Okay, finally, let's take one quick look at the time of year that you're going to be fishing because it does make a little bit difference on the things that are going to be available for you out at the beach. If you're fishing from January to March, good luck. That is a really poor time of year to be fishing. There are fish out there, however, it's cold and they're not moving as much. And a lot of stuff has moved down into Mexico for the winter and I don't blame them because we're all cold and miserable in January and February. It does start to kick back up in March. Typically when the water temperature gets about 60 degrees, when it starts climbing back up like that, that's when the fishing starts to get a little bit better. If you're fishing from April to June, that is some of the best time to be fishing down here. Now, there's a lot of fish that are coming in from Mexico and they're migrating over to Florida and we are catching them on their way to greener pastures. April through June, it starts to get kind of windy, which chops up the water and the water clarity isn't that great. It can be a little difficult to get yourself a good weather window. The fish are there, but it can be just a little bit difficult getting your baits out into a good condition day in order to get those fish. July through September, absolute prime time. That is my favorite time of year to be fishing. Not so much July, but late August and September, we hit the summer doldrums. The wind dies down, the surf dies down, the water gets clear, and the fish are hungry. They've been starving through the muddy water all summer long. Now they're ready to get out there and get some of your baits into their stomachs. October through December is a pretty good time of year. It's not the best, it's not the worst, and it kind of depends on how the weather is doing. If you have a cold front blowing through, it's gonna have a tendency of stirring things up and making it just a little bit difficult to get out there and get into the fish, and it maybe kind of messes with their temperament as well. And having been said, October is a really great month to get out there and do some fishing. November isn't that bad, and December can be really good, again, depending on the weather conditions. You will start to see the drop off. It's not as good as the prior months, but we catch fish all through the winter months. It's really in January when things just start to plummet. That is my beach fishing guide. If you have any questions, comments, or if I got it absolutely and totally wrong, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would be glad to hear everything that everybody has to say about it. Also, please consider subscribing and slapping that notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity to spend a little time at the beach with us. And if you enjoyed this video, Google thinks you're going to like that one right there. I look forward to seeing you there in just a few minutes.